Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Comblusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Kessel Run Resources, which is currently focused on exploration at its Huronium project located in northwestern Ontario. The company has had success at numerous zones of the project, including the Fisher Zone, where drilling intercepted significant gold mineralization and has extended the zone along strike by over 250 meters to the west and at the McKellar Zone, where it has been extended by over 600 meters towards the west. Additionally, Kessel Run plans to target geological structures on strike to the southwest of Gold Shore Resources Moss Lake deposit following the collection of geophysical data. The company also owns the Bluff Point project on the same structural trend as New Gold's Rainy River Mine. Today I have with me on the webinar Michael Thompson, who's the President, CEO, and Director at Kessel Run. Always good to have you with us, Michael. Hi, Taylor. Thanks. Uh, the format of uh, today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, Mike will provide an update on Kessel Run, including going over recent results and how the company plans to continue expanding mineralization on the property. And then he'll go into what else uh, we can expect from exploration in 2023. In the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live. So please send us your questions using the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. I'll note that you can type them in at any point throughout today's presentation. To start, we'll handle the disclosures. So for Kessel Run, there may be some forward looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Kessel Run corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Kessel Run specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Mike so that he can update you on what you have to look forward to with the story. Thanks, Taylor. So yeah, I'll concentrate on, uh, on giving an update on the Heronian project, which has been most of our uh, exploration efforts the last couple of years. There's the forward-looking statements again for everybody's enjoyment. So Kesselron, yeah, so we're exploring for near-surface high-grade gold in Ontario. Um, you know, uh, Northwest Ontario's top-tier jurisdiction. Uh, you know, the Heronian project's a past producer. It's got a, a past uh, a historic resource on it. Uh, so, you know, a really uh, top-notch project. Uh, hence why we're concentrating our efforts on it. Uh, and as Taylor mentioned, uh, we've got the Bluff Point uh, project, which is a, a more uh, green grassroots project, uh, which I'll touch on at, right at the end of the, the presentation. So there's a little cap market uh, sort of profile, uh, creating five cents-ish right now. This is a, a little out of date as of January 3rd. Uh, 94 million shares outstanding, three-ish million options, nine million warrants, about 106 million fully diluted. A uh, little less than a million dollars in the bank right now, uh, cash and, and uh, shares and first mining and stuff like that from a previous deal. Uh, lots of uh, high net worth investors. Uh, uh, we've got some good institutional uh, shareholders as well. Uh, management and insiders, uh, that's the majority is, is myself, uh, uh, Catlin Jeffs as well owns uh, quite, a, quite a few shares. Um, I think I'm around 6 million, she's got about 2 million or so. There's an overview of the team. Uh, myself, I'm uh, president of a consulting company based out of Thunder Bay here, uh, Flaggate Exploration. Um, professional geo with uh, over 25 years experience, um, worked for Tech, Placer Dome, Gold Corp in the past, mostly in gold exploration, uh, but I do have a bit of base metal experience as well. Uh, John DaCosta out of Vancouver, uh, he's the CFO and director. He's got over 25 years experience in corporate management compliance and runs a, a consulting uh, firm out, out uh, west there that uh, concentrates on that. Rodney joined us a couple of years ago as VP Corporate Development. He's uh, CFA, uh, lots of experience in, in uh, financings and uh, capital markets. 
And then the directors uh, rounded out by Catlin Jeffs. Uh, she's a professional geologist as well, president and CEO of Red Metal Resources, looking at IOCG deposits, iron oxide, copper, gold down in Chile, and Yana, who's a professional accountant uh, based out of Vancouver. She's a CFO of a couple of public companies as well. So here's Northwestern Ontario for those of you uh, familiar uh, somewhat with the area. This is basically uh, the southern portion below uh, Red Lake. So Red Lake would be the north part of Northwestern Ontario. This is the southern part. Uh, in my opinion, uh, underexplored as a whole. Uh, it hosts quite a few uh, advanced exploration and development projects and one uh, operating gold mine, uh, Rainy River mine that New Gold's operating out uh, Fort Francis out in the, the southwest corner. Uh, Bluff Point in the center of the project area. Um, but uh, again, we're concentrating on uh, the Veronium project and our next door neighbors. Uh, Moss Lake project is, of course, of interest. Uh, we're about 100 kilometers uh, west of. Thunder Bay, Ontario, and um, you know, lots of infrastructure. We're just south of the Trans Canada Highway. Uh, hydroelectric transmission line uh, runs along the highway. They're they're about to start a, a multi billion dollar upgrade of the system, uh, going past uh, uh, the project area. So that's quite exciting. Uh, anticipating all these projects uh, uh, coming online uh in the near future and so uh, upgrading the the power grid so there's a zoom in of our project area uh heronian in the blue uh gold shores moss lake project in the in the red right next door um it's a hundred percent owned project it's about 4600 hectares um it's got a, a past producing gold mine uh, about 30,000 ounces of gold produced in the 1930s. And then it's also uh, hosts a an historic resource that was done in 1998 of about a half a million ounces at uh, uh, about 14 grams per ton. Um, multiple high grade uh, bulk tonnage targets throughout the project area. And then of note is our southern portion of the project area is sort of on strike of uh, Moss Lake, and therefore, uh, I, we think are is quite prospective for uh, uh, Moss Lake type mineralization down the south. I'll touch on that a bit more. Uh, so, just to go over the the historic exploration uh, uh, in the area, sort of the or on the project area, um, it was discovered in 1871. It was actually Northwestern Ontario's first gold mine. Um, didn't achieve commercial production until the 30s. Um, got kicked around through the 80s and 90s. Um, various uh, property owners, uh, the, the property as you see it today uh, was amalgamated or put together by Pele Gold in 1996 from I believe 14 different vendors, different packages. So quite a feat. Um, market fell out from underneath Pele Gold uh, shortly thereafter. A little bit of bad luck on their part, and uh, they never really got traction back, and it, it got kicked around a bit after that uh, from different operators sort of through the 2000s. And then we acquired it in 2016. Um, we, after acquiring it, we did quite a bit of data compilation, a lot of boots on the ground sort of mapping and overburden trenching, did a bit of geophysics. Um, you know, all the data was was pretty much pa in paper form. Uh, so we did a lot of ground truthing and, and digitization of all that data. Um, came up with a, a, a new model, the Ronian zone, uh, and discovered a few new zones uh, through through that groundwork. Uh, kicked off the drilling in, in 2020 with a, a little 3,000 meter uh, drill program. And on the back of that, uh, uh, did uh, uh, some bigger raises and uh, as of the end of 22, we had drilled up approximately 36,000 meters. Uh, so plans for 23, we're going to continue to grow 
uh, all those zones that we've been drilling off, uh, working to outline some new zones and, and advancing that, uh, that southern part of the project, as I mentioned. So a bit more detailed geology map. Um, so as mentioned, the, the historic uh, uh, production, uh, just about 30,000 ounces of gold and uh, 170,000 ounces of silver in the 1930s. Um, and then that historic resource of uh, 44,000 ounces of gold at 15 grams indicated 500,000 at, at uh, 14 grams in fur. Now, keep in mind, that's an historic resource done pre-43-101 CIM standards. So only to be relied upon for uh, expiration potential. So that's all hosted in the Huronian gold trend, this, this northern, uh, you know, shear zone and uh, what we call the, the Huronian gold trend. And then the the southern part of the project is the Moss gold trend. We've got this this gold trend going down here. So um, we, we've we done quite a bit of groundwork, uh, sort of getting, uh, advancing the, the project area. Um, and we'll, uh, I'll talk about that a, a little bit more. So, uh, Goldshore just uh, uh, put out their maiden resource in uh, November, uh, just over 4 million ounces at 1.1 grams uh, in inferred. Um, and to note, there, there's a higher grade portion of about 2 million ounces at, at about 2 grams in, within that old, uh, within the, the envisioned pit area that you see there in gray. Uh, so we just uh, complete finally got well we completed and then got the data uh, eventually in uh, uh, last month um, uh, magnetic and, and Newtem electromagnetic survey. Uh, it's the same uh, method that uh, Goldshore did on their project back in uh, uh, 2021. Um, you know. We, we were fortunate enough to, to be able to look at that uh, uh, survey in, in, in some pretty decent detail and then be able to watch Goldshore uh, drill some of those uh, targets that, that were generated through this survey um, with good, pretty good success. So we decided to do the same survey. Um, so we're just biting, getting our teeth into it, essentially. Uh, it's a lot to, to, a lot of data to go through, a lot of... Uh, uh, targeting. Uh, it's quite an interesting uh, uh, way they do it. They, they integrate all the geological data as, as well into this and, and uh, you know, things that are over my head run these, these, these algorithms and that, that uh, uh, generate these targets. So, um, you know, it's going to take a while to, to go through it and, and really uh, uh, digest uh, and evaluate the targets that are generated. But uh, so this is just one shot uh, of the total mag magnetics. Um, you can see that Huronian uh, mine right there, so, sort of in this dilation area. And then the southern part of the project area, um, you know, we think these these flexures are, are quite important. So obviously that that's a pretty interesting feature. Uh, some other features elsewhere. Um, but early stages we're, we're just working on. Um, so yeah, the Huronian gold trends, uh, we've got these Northeast trending structures that are controlling the, the mineralization, um, we believe, uh, and then the breaks and the flexures uh, are, are also uh, uh, quite important. So there's a bit more of a zoom in of the, the mine area, the, where the old mine is, it's actually three shafts on the mine area, uh, the Huronian zone, McKellar zone, and then uh, what we're calling the, the Fisher area zones. There's actually, it was two zones, the Fisher and the, and the Fisher North, but there's multiple uh, zones that we're, we're sort of, we've outlined over the last year in, in the area. So there's a shot of the uh, uh, Huronian zone. That's the uh, that old picture from when the mine was operating in the 30s is uh, uh, looking to the southeast um, on the other side of sort of the, the big shear zone. 
that's marked by this this big low area. And then in 2020, we dug a uh, picture on the left. We dug through uh, the waste rock. You can see in the old picture, um, you know, old timers when they're mining, they just dumped all the waste rock over the the edge of the the slope, and therefore the zone itself was was buried, and and you know nobody had actually seen it. So you know, we we dug through it just to get eyes on it, take a few samples, sort of take some structural measurements and. Uh, we were probably the first people to actually uh, lay eyes on the Huronian zone since uh, uh, the discovery in the uh, uh, pre-mining area in 1930s. So sort of an interesting, uh, but we gained lots of valuable information, um, helped us uh, target the, our drilling a little bit better. So there's a long section of that uh, uh, Huronian zone. Um, so just uh, I'll just flip back. Just a quick note, you know, the the zone itself is is ten plus meters wide, um, multiple quartz veins. Um, you know, each of these terraces essentially uh, is a quartz vein. There, one there, one here, and you know, below my feet, I took the picture. Uh, how many more quartz veins? Uh, so. The old timers mined basically one of the best, the, the best. They took the best, the thickest and highest grade one that they found, um, and that was it. So, you know, we felt there was a lot of potential left over in and amongst the mine working. So each of these, this gray area essentially represents an approximately one meter wide open hole. Um, so on either side and in between, there's lots of, of, of potential gold mineralization. So. Our drill program was was uh, sort of uh, had two goals: one to to evaluate that remnant mineralization, and uh, the other was to better sort of understand it and and uh, uh, figure out which which way it was uh, uh, trending. You know, was it plunging? Um, was it plunging this way or is it plunging this way? Um, we weren't one hundred percent sure, but uh, anyways. The, the long and short of it is it was quite a successful uh, uh, drill campaign in the in the Heronian zone. We, we got some pretty good hits, um, you know, 16 grams over four meters, 10 grams over two meters, 13 over three. Uh, lots of remnant mineralization. We got, got a good idea of which way things were trending. Uh, so um, did enough drilling to sort of evaluate that remnant mineralization and, and, and set us up for for drilling down plunge uh, uh, in the future. The fissure zones, um, there's a, a drone shot. It uh, was actually taken in 2020, but I like the shot just because it shows the proximity of the, the zones, that fissure north zone and the fissure zone are actually quite close. The drone is actually probably hovering right over the Heronian zone when it uh, took that shot. Um, uh, and you know, you can see the fissure zone that that late brittle break striking through it. Um, there, it's a on a dilational flexure. It's a bunch of stacked high grade shoots. And there's a long section of the fissure zone. Uh, so when we first uh, uh, acquired the project, the fissure zone was a known zone, but it was you know about 75 meters depth. Uh, if that, and uh, maybe 100 meters strike length. So, you know, we've got it to about 700 meters in strike length. We've got it down to 200 meters. Uh, you know, we've got some fantastic hits uh, uh, throughout. Um, extended that that uh, main chute, um, you know, down quite nicely. Uh, we found some other good hits uh, elsewhere that we think are, are our potential shoots uh, that need uh, uh, more drilling. Um, lots of visible gold. Uh, yeah, so, you know, basically to recap our, our last two years of drilling, you know, we, we've expanded the zone, uh, uh, you know, in orders, orders of magnitude. Uh, so we're quite pleased with that. And as well, uh, we've discovered lots of new zones within the, the area. You know, one of the bonuses is of, of the, all these zones in such close proximity, as you can see in the, the scale bar, that's that scale bar is a uh, hundred meters. So uh, it's uh, they're all quite close together. 
And then as you back the drill up and to go drill a little bit deeper on Fisher, you're hitting these new zones. And so as we you would hit them occasionally and, and couldn't quite figure out what was going on, what, where did it fit into the model? And we started piecing it together as time rolled on. So uh, the early part of last year, we sort of announced uh, uh, that we had figured it out and we had all these, these uh, sub-parallel zones uh, all in close proximity to Peroni and, and Fisher. So um, it's nice cost-effective exploration. You, you're drilling uh, multiple zones, uh, you know, including the Heronian and, uh, uh, you know, potential economics, obviously zones that are closer together are, are more economically ad advantageous. So uh, all in all, a very good thing in the, in the sort of general uh, Fisher and Heronian uh, areas. Uh, some core pictures, a little bit of vi visible gold uh, we see occasionally. And it's a very distinct zone. You know, you can see the color change and the, the alteration package, that serocyte, carbonate, um, uh, albitic alteration, um, uh, obviously quartz veining, quartz flooding, uh, quite distinctive. Uh, the McKellar zone, um, basically the southwest extension of the Heronian. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, the zone's uh, uh, over 10 meters wide. You can see it there. Uh, that's a drill, an old drill collar from the the, the Pele uh, days sitting in the middle of the zone. Uh, always a good example of uh, make sure you know where the zone is before you start drilling. They, they collared right in the middle of the zone and uh, missed half of it, at least half of it. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we, we stripped the overburden off it, uh, got to take some good structural measurements and, and figured out what was going on and it helped us better better drill it uh, uh, going forward the last two years. Uh, so McKellar has been quite quite a, a, a successful uh, zone that, we, that we've uh, been working the last two years. Um, again, that zone was was, you know, 50, 75 meters depth and, and maybe 100 uh, meters uh, in strike length uh, when we first got onto it. And, uh, you know, we've outlined it down. Oh, out to 1200 meters we've got it down to about 150 meters depth right now um you know huge potential you know we barely scratched the surface uh it's just the zone keeps going and going we've got another 1200 meters to go uh you know we, we've got some indications that it keeps going there's no reason to believe it doesn't we've got some outcrop uh you know grab samples and that that uh so we know where it is roughly it's just you know got to keep marching that drill uh to the southwest um so we've been meticulously drilling it sort of you know expanding that that uh core um mckellar original mckellar zone you know bringing it down to depth but also uh marching to the southwest and, and getting some pretty good hits you know you see this uh you know 48 grams over over 0.6 and and that so um you know, lots of potential to find, to outline some, some new shoots. But yeah, qu quite exciting that, uh, that we ex have expanded it that much, you know, from, from a hundred meters strike length to, to 1200 is, is, uh, quite, uh, uh, success and, and kudos to, to the geo team for sure. There's a little zone, uh, a plan map of the McKellar zone showing that 1200 meter strike length. And, um, you know, again, that the original zone sort of sitting in the, in this area. Uh, and so we've continued to march, uh, to the Southwest. And again, here's, here's some shots of the, the core again, you know, Visible gold occasionally, uh, lots of quartz vein, quartz flooding, you know, fairly uh, distinct alteration package. You know, really shows the the vibrancy of the system and and uh... so just to to sort of summarize, you know, we we've had tremendous drilling success uh, through the last couple of years. Uh, you know, we've we've extended the Fisher zone. Uh, we keep hitting high grade. Uh, the zone continues to grow uh, tremendously. We've extended it down plunge and long strike. 
And then we've discovered multiple new zones all in, in close proximity. Um, McKellar, you know, pretty much the same story. We, we've uh, extended that high grade shoot down plunge. Uh, we've uh, found potential new uh, high grade shoots all over the place. We've uh, ex expanded the zone, uh, you know, to over a kilometer and we've got, uh, uh, you know, an, at least another kilometer uh, to the southwest to go. Uh, Peronian, uh, that remnant resource uh, potential uh, has certainly been, uh, uh, the thesis has been proven. Uh, we need to, to keep working to upgrade it a little bit more. And we've uh, just started extending that uh, mineralization down plunge. So there's a quick overview of the, of the geology map just show, showing sort of the summarizing that 36,000 meters of drilling we, we've completed as of the end of 2022. Uh, you know, multiple new zones identified. We've got a way better understanding of the system. Uh, so more effective drilling as, as we, we march uh, into, uh, into the future. Um, we've doubled the size of these, uh, the Fisher and McKellar zones. Uh, so we're going to keep uh, working hard, uh, expanding the size of all those zones and, and uh, discovering new zones. I'll just uh, touch on Bluff Point. We did get some boots on the ground last summer. Uh, uh, there'll be a news release uh, with, with sort of summarizing those results and our, our, uh, our thinking on, on how we're going to move that forward uh, in the near future. Uh, again, it's 100% owned, uh, about just shy 9,000 hectares. Um, it's about 50 kilometers on strike from the uh, Rainy River Gold Mine. Uh, the Rainy River Structural Zone runs up to the to the northeast and and sort of horse tails in to in the bluff point project that's where why we think there's a lot of potential uh in that project um lots of high grade and bulk tonnage tar uh, targets um it's a bit of a different beast for the most part it's it's uh it's it's got your typical greenstone sort of tar targets and geology uh, that we think has a lot of potential, but the the big sort of what attracted us to the project is the um, the porphyry type targets, the granite hosted. Um, you know, they can be uh, monsters, right? Uh, you know, two examples in Ontario, uh, Hammond Reef, which is actually quite close to to Heronian. It's a granite hosted uh, deposit that's uh, uh, under Agnico Eagles. Uh, wings, uh, combined uh, ounces, just uh, over 5 million ounces. Um, Cote Lake that I am Gold and Sumitomo are working to, to put into production, uh, building the mine right now. Uh, you can see they've got, uh, you know, 7 million ounces in, in proven and probable reserves. They've got 13 million ounces in, in measured and indicated resources, and then another five, over 5 uh, in, uh, in inferred. So, you know, these deposits can be huge, you know, 20 million ounce plus uh, deposits when it's all said and done. Um, so obviously this is what attracted us to it. Uh, lots of gold showings in the, in the granite, uh, you know, lots of, of, of work to be done. It's early stages. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I'll, I'll, as I said, there'll be a news release in the, in the near future, uh, sort of summarizing what we did in the summer and, and uh, why we, think uh, the work we we did and the results of that work are, are important to the to the overall uh, potential and and way forward on that project I'll skip the the expiration history but uh, so why Kessel run well we've got two hundred percent owned projects you know one an advanced project Heronian uh, uh, you know with with a, a past producer and a historic resource on it uh lots of uh high grade gold intercepts and then bluff point which has has a a lot of uh, blue sky potential um both have multiple high grade and bulk tonnage targets on it really have you know even with the thirty six thousand meters drilled on uh heronian has limited seen limited exploration and and relatively shallow uh drilling you know down to 150 meters 200 meters is is nothing in the grander scheme of things uh, when you're looking at other projects that are down uh, you know 500 a thousand meters uh, 
if I had ongoing drilling success, uh, continue to, to keep hitting high grade gold. Uh, we've got a great team, uh, you know, a bunch of smart guys uh, uh, working hard and, and uh, uh, you know, have been integral to the success of the, the projects the last couple of years. And we're uh, looking forward to 2023 and advancing those projects even further. Thank you very much. Great, thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, great presentation. Uh, so now we'll turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. And just a reminder to everybody on the line uh, that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, so with that, we do, we do, we do have some of that come in. Um, the first one um, I'll touch on here is just wondering about where's the, the biggest uh, potential for expansion? Is it the, the McKellar zone since it's open to the Southwest and it can kind of keep running? Is that, I guess, where the, where there's the most uh, potential to keep expanding it or? Yeah, I think that's the easiest one. I mean, you know, it's, it's right at surface. We can, we can drill shallow and, and it's, it's open on strike. I mean, you know, Fisher, a uh, little bit more complicated. We're getting a little bit deeper for the most part. Um, Peronian, same thing. You know, we're, we're going to start uh, drilling deeper. But yeah, we're quite excited with with McKellar. I mean, you can you can add uh, uh, a lot of mineralized ground really quickly with, with all that open strike length, for sure. Right. Okay. And then, you know, I guess from that comment, the, the focus will be on that lateral drilling as a pro, as opposed to at depth, you know, maybe save some costs that way and get the low hanging fruit, if you will. Is that Absolutely. Absolutely. I like low hanging fruit. <laughs> Perfect. And, uh, you know, just with all the, the zones, I guess they do remain open at depth. So there's future. Oh yeah, absolutely. Protection. Absolutely. Perfect. It's cheap. It's cheaper to figure out, uh, uh, what's going on when with shallow holes than, uh, deep holes. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, so I guess with that, um, you know, we talked about those zones and then Curonian, um, the, with the remnant mineralization there, you know, how's your understanding of that coming? Um, is it, uh, have you got a handle on that or? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, we're, we're as we're taking the last couple months, uh, guys are working on the 3D model. Um, so they're, they're really digging into the old uh, chip samples and, and uh, um, the old level plan maps and, and combining that with our, our, uh, our drilling results, uh, and coupled with the new geophysics, you know, the new geophysics, I think is going to reveal some, some good, uh, targets on Heronian, uh, on strike. Um, but yeah, so we're getting a better understanding of what, what's going on, uh, there, um, you know, the, the plunge direction and that, so that, that all better, uh, you know, help us drill it, uh, going forward for sure. Okay, great. Um, so we have a question here, um, I guess ties in with, with overall kind of outlook for 2023. Uh, just wondering on, on how you're doing for funds and I guess, is that enough to, to get you going for this year? Yeah. I mean, you know, we've got just shy of a million in the bank. Um, it's enough to, to, to start redrilling, but, uh, you know, we'll have to do, do a fundraise at, at some point to, to keep it sustained. So we're, as I said, we're, you know, roughly we're, we're just waiting to finish, uh, you know, get this model done, uh, and wrap our heads around, uh, everything and then digest all this geophysics and, and get ready. And, and we'll be able to tell a, a pretty good story, uh, what, not only to, to get the drilling started, but also to tell tell everybody the great potential and the, uh, of these targets that we're uh, working on generating right now. Okay, and then I assume uh, once that uh, process is, is kind of started and you, you've figured out the financing situation, uh, you'd kind of define kind of what the program would look like for this year in terms of meters and, and all that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, you know, just going back a second here, um, you, last fall in the second half, you, uh, you did pause drilling at, at, at one point to ensure you got all your assays back, yep. integrate the data. Um, and this, you know, then you did the geophysics. So the final push is on to kind of integrate those two and interpret them. Is that the where you're at now? Yeah. So, uh, uh, all, all the results on uh, sort of the mine area have been put out. We we drilled a handful of uh, reconnaissance hole in the south and uh, elsewhere. Uh, that that'll be released shortly. We're going to sort of combine it with the the geophysics. Um, you know, 
waiting for the geophysics to come in was uh, uh, slightly agonizing, but uh, you know, I understand it. It, it is a lot of data, a lot of uh, processing time, and it just it just takes time and time and time and time to to crunch the crunch the numbers and let the computer run run its course. You know, if anybody's uh, has any experience with doing resources and uh, you just wait for the computer to run its uh, runtime, and and then uh, and that's essentially the same with the geophysics running these algorithms, and that uh, you know with the immense amount of data that they collected, it's uh, just time consuming. Right. Okay. And then when when I guess would you look to start up drilling uh, this year? Um, you know, a rough rough idea is, is sort of April May. That's the that's the rough plan. Um, you know, I think uh, that'll give us enough time to get through all this geophysics data and, and get this, the, the 3D model updated and, and, and to a place we're happy with. Um, and we'll see what the gold uh, market does uh, in the meantime as well. Right. And then in terms of just uh, project access and all that, by, by April, May, you'll be clear and good and won't have any issues or anything like that. Oh, we, we, in general, we don't have issues anytime, right? There's there's roads all through the, the, the property area. It's 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 a dream property access wise. Um, you know, wait, waiting until the mud dries out uh, is always advantageous. But, uh, you know, we can drill, you know, year round anyway. So that's that's not a problem. Great. Perfect. OK. Um, let's turn to, to Bluff Point here. We have a question sure. that came in. Uh, just somebody wondering if there's any uh, other potential resources or, or other mineralization at Bluff Point other than gold. There actually is. I mean, there's we've we've had some uh, past uh, uh, nickel grab samples uh, through through the the granite area. Uh, there is some some uh, copper zinc showings elsewhere. So. Um, it, you know, it's a pretty decent land package and encum encompassing a lot of different rock types and that. So, uh, predominantly gold, but, uh, you know, my geologists or, you know, geologists, they're always hunting for, for any kind of good rock. So, um, yeah. So in the past we've actually, uh, you know, picked up some, some decent nickel numbers. So that's something we should, uh, we'll be keeping in mind, uh, as we move, move forward for sure. Perfect. Okay. Um, we had a question just come in, just wondering about the webinar, so I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, yes, it is recorded. It'll be available on uh, redcloudfs.com uh, for, for replay purposes. Um, okay, so I think we're through pretty well all the, the questions here. Um, let me check here. Um, and I guess just on Bluff Point, you know, is, is are you still evaluating uh whether to i guess bring in a partner on that project or just kind of advance it right now do a little bit of work yourself and, and leave that for the future or how well i think that? yeah the work we did during the summer uh the, or sorry not summer fall uh more accurate uh this past year was essentially that getting it uh you know advancing the, the story and sort of fleshing out the story uh and we'll see where we're at i mean you know, I would love to 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 drill it myself and and explore it myself, but uh, uh, juniors are are better sort of sticking to one thing. I find so, um, you know, bring in a partner. I mean, these things, as I said, they're monsters. I think it'll it'll attract a lot of, of eyes once we sort of can tell a more complete story uh, with the work we did this past year. Um, you know, twenty million ounce deposits uh, don't come along uh, uh, very often, so. Uh, and I think that's got the potential, same potential as Cote for sure. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think we're out of questions here. So maybe if you, you know, just have a final thought for investors or want to leave something for people to think about, I'll give you the floor. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've, we've had some pretty good success uh, over the last couple of years. You know, we, we drill cost effectively. We were keep a, a tight eye on the budgets, um, had, fantastic numbers with with the the meters we put in the ground so uh in a rising gold sector i think uh you know castle run is a, a good place to 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 be watching for sure excellent so thanks a lot mike uh, for joining thank us you. today and uh, thank you to everybody uh on the webinar for attending and uh have a good afternoon thank you